2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7 says, Now we have this light shining in our hearts. Everyone say light. You say it so nicely. That's very good. Shining in our hearts. Say hearts. No, you you didn't say hearts. You said hearts. It's hearts. Everyone say hearts. Now you're Australian. Welcome to the Australian world. But we ourselves are like fragile clay jars containing this great treasure that makes it clear that our great power is from God and not from ourselves. We are fragile clay jars containing this great treasure. I've seen over the years people been used by God and and people have looked at the jar instead of the treasure. If we're going to be people who transform society, society is all about the jar, but God is all about the treasure. We work on our jars. We we put Botox in our jars. We 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 put filler in our jars. We um We do a whole heap of things in our jars to look at our jars and we try to present our jars as really good and beautiful and and they are and they're amazing and powerful and handsome, but they're fragile. That's why we have to have discipleship because we got to discover the treasure, not just look at the jar. Too many times we look at the jar Well, I'm this and I'm that. And, you know, you compare yourself to other people. No, God goes, look at the treasure. Too many times we we look at the external instead of looking for the treasure. (laughs) I discovered the jar is made of clay. And that clay, over a period of time, has a thing called gravity. You can try and lift it. You can try and tuck it. But there is a thing called gravity. Eventually, the jar has all these challenges to it. And it's the treasure that's what is eternal. The thing about these jars that is our lives, they're formed by the potter. Psalm 139 verse 1 to 18 says, O Lord, you've examined my heart and you know everything about me. You know when I sit down or stand up, you know even my thoughts, even when I'm far away from you. You see me when I travel, when I rest at home. You know what I'm going to say even before I say it, Lord. Just like my, my mother was like that. She would go, you're about to sin. And I had, I'd planned to sin, but she would go, you're about to sin. I remember one time I... Uh, Went to a horror movie, R-rated horror movie. Like it was like, you know, I think it was Texas Chainsaw or whatever something. And and you know, I was 14, and you know, it wasn't a good movie to see. And I wasn't allowed to see horror movies. And in fact, I wasn't allowed to see most movies. And I was in this cinema, and I was feeling so bad, but I was watching it. And my mother's at home doing the dishes, and the Holy Spirit says to her. Russell's at Tea Tree Plaza Cinemas in cinema number seven, watching a horror movie. So I'm feeling guilty. And as I'm watching this movie, I hear this voice, it's Russell Evans here. I'm like, wow, the director of this movie is incredible. It's made Satan's voice sound like my mum. And she come and drag me home and yeah, because my house, we had scripture everywhere. You know, it's good to put scripture up. Jason loves scripture. We love scripture. My my mum loved the Bible. She would she knew the Bible off by heart. We called her a walking concordance, literally. And we had scripture, you know, in the house. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord on a plaque. Then in my bedroom, children obey your parents. Even in the toilet, fear not, for I am with you. That's because my brother had a bit of a bow issue. But he wasn't arrested for global warming, but he had a lot of issues. (laughs) 
Some of you will get that tomorrow. We even had a stick with scripture on it. Spare the rod, spoil the child. And on the other side, we need the every hour. And if it was a choice out of my dad and my mom, I'm talking like an American mom, and uh, if it was out of my dad and my mom to minister to me, it'd be my dad, because he'd cry. This is gonna hurt me more than it's gonna hurt you. I'd say, Dad, give me the stick you bend over and let's see if that's okay. <laughs> my mum, she'd just break out in a song. Na 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 Hey! Reba, Reba! I prayed you, I pray. Her forehand, her backhand was amazing. You know everything I do. You go before me and you follow me. You place your hand of blessing on my head. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too great for me to understand. I can never escape from your spirit. I can never get away from your presence. If I go to heaven, you there. If I go to the grave, you are there. If I ride the wings of the morning, if I dwell by the farthest oceans, Australia, even there, your hand will guide me and your strength will support me. I could ask the darkness to hide me and the light around me to become night, but even in darkness, I cannot hide from you. And then it goes on and it says this, you have made all the delicate inner parts of my body and knitted me together in my mother's womb. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. I think that was written by a woman this psalm for sure. Wonderfully complex. Women are complex. Men aren't that complex. We're just like, sport, food. Amen. It says, your workmanship is marvelous. How well I know it. You know, you are God's workmanship because He's the potter and He's working all things together for good. And He is working on your behalf. So we're fragile. But we have a potter that's working in our lives. The thing about jars is they're made for beauty. My mum, my mom, she had these jars. They were called Wedgwood jars. They're English. God save the king now. It used to be the queen, but back then. And she'd have these jars and and she'd had this beautiful jar in, in the lounge area. And, my, and it was there to just be an ornament of beauty. And, and uh, my brother and I were playing indoor football. Exactly. <laughs> but it was with a balloon. So we're like kicking the balloon, but we got a bit violent. And the jar, <laughs> it broke. And I blamed him because he deserved whatever he got. So Josh, see, the church should be beautiful. We're, we're, we're not perfect. We're fragile, but we're beautiful. You're, you're, you're a, a jar. You're created by the potter. You're created for beauty. You're created, but you're created with treasure in mind. Jars are made for a function, not just for beauty as well, but they're made a function. You, you fill up jars of orange juice or jars of water. They're there for a function. You're not here just to be an ornament. You're here to be a person who functions. You're here to change the world. You, you're not here just to sit on some social media site or sit and oh, well, look at that jar, it's amazing. No, you're there for a function, a purpose. When God created you, He created with purpose in mind. They did this uh, study in the universities of the US and they said, if there was one question you could ask God, what would it be? And so they did this survey and the, the students wrote back or put in the answer. And you, you might think that the number one answer or question you would ask God would be, why is there pain? 
That wasn't the number one. You'd think the number one question would be, when's the world going to end? But that wasn't the number one question. The number one question, so if you put all the questions together, they equal 25%. The one question that equaled 75%, one question was, what is my purpose? And the reason people get broken is because they lose their purpose. And tonight, God wants you to understand you have a treasure and you have purpose. You're not just, you say, but I messed up. I, I, I. That's why you're a fragile jar. Jars break. Jars are made of function. Jars are designed to carry something. But jars are also very vulnerable. And we live in a society that, that we get judged. In Matthew chapter 7, it says, Do not judge others and you will not judge, for you'll be treated as you treat others. The standard you use in judging is the standard by which you will be judged. And why worry about the speck in your friend's eye when you have a log in your own? How, how can you think of saying to your friend, let me help you get rid of that speck in your eye where you can't see past a log in your own eye? You see, this world judges us and, and, and judges people and, and we become vulnerable. So what, what happens is we say, I, I don't want to be in that space. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to self-medicate to help my vulnerability. I'm, I'm going to do something or pursue a career to help my vulnerability. I, I'm going to get into a relationship that will help my vulnerability, but it's not helping your vulnerability. It's just being an excuse for your vulnerability. Because we got a world that judges. That's why the church shouldn't be judgmental. All the things, all we judge is fruit. The Bible says to be fruit inspectors. It doesn't say be jar inspectors, it'd be fruit inspectors. Why, do we, why are we going to be fruit inspectors? Because I want to know someone's fruit so I can learn from their fruit. I don't want to, I don't want to look at their fruit and criticize their fruit. I want to look at their fruit and say, hey, teach me, help me. See, I've been in this Christian space a long time. And I've seen so many judgmental people judging, judging, judging. That's called religiosity. And all religion will do is throw a stone at your fragile jar when it's fragile and broken already. But God says, no, look for the treasure. Look for the fruit and learn from the fruit. So there's some things that I've got an experience in that Pastor Jason hasn't got the degree of experience. So he looks at my fruit and he says, how can I learn from that fruit? There's some things that Pastor Jason has that is, is gone beyond me and, and, and God's blessing with. So I look at that fruit. I don't go, oh, I, I'm insecure with that fruit or I'm going to judge that fruit. I'm going to judge the jar. No, I'm going to look at the fruit and say, how can I get that fruit for me? See, God, I love this about God. He... He gives us our 1% uniqueness. <laughs> we got there's some uniqueness that, that are ours alone. But that unique, uniqueness isn't to be separated from the 99. It's there to fulfill the 99. <laughs> so... And God uses different vessels to do different things. And you know, if you watch Dr. Tim, he's, he's, yeah, he's LA, right? LA, yeah. He's LA. And some people who are not from LA might look at it and go, well, he's from LA. But someone else goes, no, look at the treasure. People look at me, they're from Australia. They're too honest in Australia. But you look at the treasure and you say, what can I look at, learn from the treasure? 
Because the world looks at the jar, doesn't look at the treasure. And here's the thing, the jar will die one day, but the treasure won't. But here's the thing with, with us, is we are vulnerable. And I, I have to constantly keep saying to myself and our church, be soft-hearted, strong mind, not hard-hearted, soft head. Because when you, see, you know what was stolen from the garden? Innocence. You know where there's innocence? There's vulnerability. When I have innocence and vulnerability, when my vulnerability is in innocence, then I can receive and I can live. But what does the devil try to do? He tried to steal your innocence and then make you feel vulnerable. But when you have innocence, your vulnerability is okay. But when you lose your innocence, you're worried about your vulnerability. What did Jesus restore? Our innocence. Jars are vulnerable. Jars are also placed in places for the best effect. This jar called Freedom City Church is placed on the hill for the best effect. You know, people have tried to throw stones through words or criticism or whatever. Let's pull the jar down. Let's knock the jar down. But God says, no, I'm going to place it for the best effect. I'm going to place it in a position that will get the attention of the community and actually bring healing to the community and bring freedom to the community. Their place for the best effect. You know, when you're, when you're planting churches, when you, they tell you you need to plant in the right place with plenty of parking. Plenty of parking. We started our church in a university. There wasn't that much parking. And then we went to another place, the parking got better. And then when we found our building for our main campus, the one thing that was missing was parking. And I'm like, God, how are we gonna do this? But it was right next to the casino and next to a market. So we're right in the right place, just the car parking is an issue. So I'm like, God, how are you gonna build this? He goes, don't worry. Just put it here. I put it here for the best effect. You know, today we'll have four full services, probably with kids and youth over this weekend. We'll have 10,000 people in that jar where it has a parking issue. And then one of the, the casino took what the one place that we had for parking and took it for themselves. But God says, you're looking at all the reasons how do the logistics and I'm into logistics and I'm into all that but if I put you there nothing can stop the growth of this because it's place for the best effect some of you go why am I in this workplace you're there for the best effect you've looked at all the reasons why you shouldn't be and you feel vulnerable, but God's put you there for the best effect. <laughs> well, I'm in this family. You're there for the best effect. But my family is crazy. Everybody's family is crazy. We, some just pretend more. I had a good dad and I, I had a good upbringing, but my family's dysfunctional. We've just learned to be more religious in our, how we show it. Every family has issues. Well, I come from a perfect fam family. Liar, liar, pants on fire. God made jars contain treasure. You have the treasure of heaven in you but too many times you're looking at the jar not looking at the treasure 
But here's the thing about jars, they can be broken. <laughs> Pastor Jason talked about on brokenness. Jars are broken, but this is what I love about God, is God loves putting jars back together again. He turns our scars into our stars. I'm in South Africa. I said to Pastor Art Bossoff, you need to get Jason. He goes, yes, he gets him. Pastor, Pastor Jason starts speaking to these South Africans about poverty and breaking poverty and getting out of the grip of Egypt. But when he's going through what he's going through, the enemy meant it for evil. But God turned his scars into stars. And as he begins to preach to thousands and thousands of people there, I'm sitting there and he's got them in that in his palm as he's preaching and he's speaking. And I can see people starting to get free and getting free and getting free and getting free. And you are like that. Your scars have been turned into stars. And, and, and you know, I, I look at people all around. You see, these broken vessels, God loves putting back together again. Watch this. Jeremiah 17 says, and God picked up the pieces and put me back together again. You are my praise. Hmm. In, in Japan, because Liz is Japanese and Scottish, so I had to speak on Japanese for one time. There's this thing called Kinsinj Kintsinju, Sinji. It's a Japanese method of repairing broken ceramics with a special lacquer mixed with gold, silver, or platinum. And the philosophy behind the technique is to recognize the history of the object and to visibly incorporate the repair into the new piece instead of disguising it. The process usually results in something becoming more beautiful than the original. So a jar breaks and you put gold and platinum and God is like that. The enemy breaks things in your life. Your life is broken and God says, watch what I do. And this is a picture of it right here. And in actual fact, this is more valuable now than the original vase. This is more valuable because of its brokenness, because of what it's gone through. And then it shows the royalty of what God does. And He says, watch what I do. And that's a picture of our lives. We are fragile jars that God puts back together again to show His glory. <laughs> Revelation chapter 12, verse 11 says this, And they defeated Him. By the blood of the Lamb, put the jar back up. And the power of their testimony. This gold here is the testimony of the potter. <laughs> See, some of us have tried to hide our scars because we think, what will people think? Show them the beauty of your scars. Oh, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. Pitch. Forty times hammered nail prints. And when he walks through the wall, they said, Is that really you? And he says, And, and Thomas says, Show me your scar prints. <laughs> and it was when he showed him his scar, Oh, you are. The world aren't looking for a perfect jar, even though it pretends it does. It's looking for fragile jars that have been put back together again but you carry treasure stop worrying about the jar well, what will people think who cares because God puts it back together again and he makes this and he feels it it becomes more valuable
you know what the Bible says? He who is forgiven much, loves much. I was lost, but you found me. I was broken, but you put me back together again. When Jesus announces why he's here, he walks in and he says, opens the scroll and he says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to heal the brokenhearted, to set the captives free, to open the sight to the blind. In other words, he's anointed to put the jars back together again to carry his treasure. And some of you are looking at your jar. My jar's not good enough. My jar's not talented enough. My jar doesn't look like this and doesn't look like that. No, it's your treasure. The jar will be put back together if you let him. (laughs) See, the Bible says, the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead lives in me and you. We have this treasure of power. And this is what I felt the Holy Spirit say he was going to do tonight he was going to overflow our jars with his anointing his treasure that it will spill out and release blessing but some of us need to allow him to fix our fragile jar (laughs) you're holding on to unforgiveness you know the two things that God doesn't respond to people who don't forgive and people who aren't humble. They're the two things. God, hear my prayer, but I haven't forgiven this person. He can't. He can't respond. God, uh, <laughs> I want you to do this because I'm awesome. And he goes, no, I have to resist you because you're dependent on yourself. And there's people here and you need your jar to be fixed. You, you feel like you're broken, but God says, tonight I'm going to do this to you. And that takes a little of a process. It's called discipleship. But those scars make the beauty of who you are. <laughs> so let's all stand to our feet. If you're in the overflow, this is for you. But you're in this room and you say, I feel broken with unforgiveness, fear, and I need God to put my jar back together. If that's you, I want you to lift your hands wherever you are. If that's you, yeah, thank you. Thank you. You say, I feel vulnerable. I don't feel... I can do this. So, Father, right now, do consent you in the Spirit. Bring your royal blood, your royal power, and come and fix our fragileness. Put our broken parts back together. In the name of Jesus and our value because of our scars will go to another level. So I thank you. Right now, I break every lie of the enemy, every intimidation of what the enemy has tried to do. Be whole, be whole, be whole. Behold.